On the national news today, we have the latest on the Boko Haram, distracted driving with Craig Boswell, and more on the weather with Lauren. Look at this chef, right? <laughs> right? That's so gay. That's really gay. Dude, look at those hands. Please don't say that. What? Don't say that something is gay when you mean that something is dumb or stupid. It's insulting. It's like if I thought this pepper shaker was stupid and I said, man, and this pepper shaker is so 16-year-old boy with a cheesy mustache. Just saying. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. Welcome to the National Rundown. I'm Ryan Woodhatch. And I'm Paul Hudrick. The Al-Shabaab attack on Garissa University in Kenya leaves 147 dead, but an unknown, unknown number of civilians are being held hostage. As of the last count, only 280 of the 800 plus students in the university were accounted for. Police are currently attempting to get the situation under control, with the gunman being cornered in one of the four residential buildings on campus. New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez was charged on Wednesday for accepting nearly a million dollars in gifts in exchange for political favors. Menendez expressed his anger against the indictment and refuses to let the change end his career. Menendez is the second New Jersey senator to be indicted and will face federal court in Newark on Thursday. A 10-year-old fifth grader leaped to his death after losing a chess match. Police say the boy jumped out of a second-story window at his elementary school because his opponent didn't say, checkmate. Swarthmore College is investigating who painted the words Rape Haven on the front of the fraternity house. The incident was reported on Tuesday at the Delta Obsidian Fraternity due to the federal, federal privacy laws. The college declined to comment when asked if it is investigating any sexual assault cases in the fraternity. Mandatory water use reductions have been ordered in California for the first time in history. The state has been experiencing a four-year drought and Governor Jerry Brown believes this, this will help the issue. The governor has directed the State Water Resources Control Board to enforce a 25% reduction on the state's 400 local water supply agencies. A New York police detective faces suspension after a passenger captured an incident between an Uber driver and a detective on video. The detective is caught yelling at the driver and making fun of the driver's accent because the driver signaled him to use his blinker while trying to park. Two women suspected of being terrorist sympathizers were arrested Thursday for allegedly plotting to detonate a pressure cooker bomb in New York. An FBI spokesman confirmed the arrest, but circumstances surrounding the arrest or the alleged plot were not immediately clear. It was not clear what the specific target of the alleged plotters was. Local reports said that the public was never in any danger and that the pair suspected was arrested without incident. After months, Iran and the United Nations are coming closer towards a joint diplomacy statement. While the Islamic State has been advancing their program for years, actual talks have not begun until recently. The president has been quoted saying that this is a good deal in the making. A pizzeria in Indiana created a fundraiser to help the re relieve the financial loss they endured from the freedom, Religious Freedom Act. Memories Pizza has said they will not cater a gay wedding, which helped them gain media attention and lose customers. The pizzeria used the website GoFundMe to raise $150,000 in 18 hours. After the break, we have Nina Contento for the latest entertainment news and Samantha Rizzo with our onset Q&A. Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there? What about jobs? No? Now try your closet. Still no jobs, just more stuff? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? That can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed. And they're the stuff inside your stuff. Our job is to unlock those jobs. And it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. 
So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover keytar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill. Donate stuff. Create jobs. Famous televangelist Robert H. Schuler died on Thursday in a care center in California. He started the hit televangelist series Hour of Power back in 1970. He also hosted the series until 2010 when his grandson took over. Schuler had been diagnosed with esophageal cancer in 2013. Katy Perry leaked some very personal information. Here's Nina Contento with the latest on that and more in entertainment news. Katy Perry leaks her phone number over to 70 million people. No April Fool's joke here. The singer didn't realize that when she tweeted and posted a video on Instagram of her puppy Butters, her phone number was on the dog's tag and it was showing. According to Us Weekly, immediately after fans notified Perry, the video was taken down and the number was disconnected. Ex-member of One Direction, Zayn Malik, is enjoying his time out of the spotlight. He was spotted vacationing with his fiance, putting the cheating and trouble in paradise rumors to rest. Malik tweeted that there are a lot of jealous people in the world, and this is the best time for him to leave the boy band. He publicly apologized to his fans for letting anyone down, but also just wants to live the normal life of a normal 22-year-old. Bruce Jenner is preparing to face wrong, a wrongful death lawsuit, although it is not confirmed yet. According to sources, the stepchildren of Kim Lowe, the woman killed in the head-on collision, are planning to sue. On February 7th, Howe's Lexus was forced into oncoming traffic where she slammed into Jenner's Hummer head-on. Friends of Howe said that she had virtually no relationship with her stepchildren and has no other direct relatives. Howe left her left her left most of her trust worth millions of dollars to charities thank you and back to the desk thanks nina 11 out of 12 people were convicted of cheating boosting test scores and racketeering and other crimes in atlanta city school districts investigators say that initially 180 teachers at 44 schools were implicated and cheating could have been going on since 2001. three alleged members of the ku klux klan were arrested thursday in a plot to kill a black prison inmate after his release. The men plotted the murder after he got into a fight with Jordan Driver, a KKK member. All three men were charged with one count of conspiracy to commit murder. Andrew Getty, the 47-year-old grandson of oil tycoon J. Paul Getty, was found dead in his Los Angeles home. While investigators are saying the death appears to be of natural causes, they're looking into the woman who Getty has recently filed a restraining order against. Five Americans who were monitored for three weeks at an Omaha, Nebraska hospital after being exposed to Ebola in West Africa are released. One of the five had a heart-related issue on Saturday and has been discharged but hasn't left the area, while the other has returned home. They were exposed to Ebola in Sierra Leone in March, but none have actually developed a deadly virus. And now, Samantha Rizzo has the latest on the new host of Comedy Central's The Daily Show. Hi guys, how are you doing? Hi Samantha, how's it going? Nice Good, us. thanks. I wanted to talk about uh, the new host, Trevor Noah, as the Daily Show host. Comedy Central has named him as Jon Stewart's replacement, and there's been a lot of scrutiny in the news about him, and they came out with a statement today saying that they're stand behind their decision as having Noah as the new host. What kind of scrutiny has he faced from the fans of the show? Um, it mainly has to do with his Twitter. Apparently, some fans uh, researched him after Comedy Central announced him as the new host and found some offensive tweets about uh, obese women and Jews and um, there's been a lot of uproar about it. So why did Comedy Central choose him as the new host? Uh, he's been on the show three times, he's made small appearances and he isn't very well known in America so I think they're taking a fresh new look at somebody. He's South African, he's a South African political satirist and um, he's a fresh face and a new perspective for the show. When will he actually start? They haven't come out with a date yet. Uh, John Stewart announced that he'll be stepping down this year, so sometime in 2015. Um, and how do you think, in your opinion, I guess, how will he do? Uh, I agree with Comedy Central that I, I think it's great to see a network stand behind right. their new choice, their new employee. Um, I think it's interesting that they went with a smaller name and not somebody well-known or somebody that's been on this show. Right. But I really think this is going to launch his career in America. Right. 
There were he, some there were some big names being thrown out there, I know. So Yeah, and he mm. certainly has big shoes to fill. So Absolutely. We'll John Story's been see. there for a long time. So. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank Jonathan. you. Thanks, Sam. Four people were killed and 45 injured in the Gulf of Mexico early Wednesday. A fire erupted on an oil rig belonging to Mexico State's petroleum giant Pemex, but the cause of the fire has yet to be released. Ten firefighter boats arrived on the scene to put out the massive blaze. 300 others were evaluated from the oil rig. Atlanta teen Anthony Stokes died two years after receiving a heart transplant while trying to flee from the cops on Tuesday. Stokes is known for having multiple run-ins with the law, but recently stole a car and fired a gun at an elderly woman. That led to the second ending of his ch second chance at life in a police chase. For the latest on Boko Haram, German Wings, and other world headlines, we go to Dylan DeSimony for the World News Minute. Hello, I'm Dylan DeSimony. This is World News Minute. First up, German Wings Flight 9525 crashed last week, approximately 60 miles northwest of Nice, France. Officials say the crash was intentional and caused by co-pilot Andreas Lubitz, who suffered from extreme depression. The black box recording shows that the pilot, Captain Patrick Sodenheimer, attempted to break open the door during his final moments. Next, ISIS stormed a Palestinian refugee camp in Syria, the same camp that was blockaded by President Assad after Syrian rebels took it over in 2012. Now, 18,000 pa Palestinian refugees already in an unstable country are under ISIS's control. And third, Nigeria has elected a new president. General Muhammadu Buhari defeated incumbent Goodluck Jonathan, who was criticized for failing to contain terror group Boko Haram. It is expected voters have faith in Buhari's military experience and that he'll do a better job against the group. That's all the time we have for today. Back to the desk. Let's take it over to Robin with My Truth. Ryan. In recent news, we have another campus who has, is a victim of racial profiling. After the video from the Sigma Alpha Epsilon fraternity surfaced, another video has come up. <clears throat> On the Duke campus, there have been reports emerging that a female African-American student had, di had racial slurs directed towards her last week. Now, I don't know what you guys think about this, but let me tell you what I think. I think that the president was right to sit down the fraternity. I mean, yes, no, you cannot, um, you cannot charge the whole, the part for the whole. But in, in looking, viewing that video, nobody stopped them. Every, it might have been a few, but the whole bus was involved. So, yes, they should have been sat down. Sorry, guys, but you didn't say anything. You didn't stop it, so you got to pay the price. I mean, really, racism is alive and well. And those acts that were committed just recently has proven that statement to be true. Just this morning, the authorities had to investigate the hanging of a noose from a campus tree at this very same university. Do, yes. I mean, really, what is going on at these, in these campuses that we're not seeing? A lot is being done and very little is being uncovered. I mean, it's, I think it's time to pull the sheet back, to pull the sheets back and expose everything that is going on in these campuses. These campuses are there for us to be empowered, to learn, to do that. And it's not happening. You know, I'm reminded, in my opinion, any form of stereotyping is, a, is evidence of a lack of intelligence. <clears throat> Dr. King said it best when he said it in his speech when he stood on, stood on the steps at the Lincoln Memorial a little over 50 years ago. He said that this nation needs to rise up and live out the creed, it, live out its creed. <clears throat> he, said that this, he said that this country needs to, it, no, it said, hold true to what you believe and that all, all men are crea created equal. Are we created equal? Are we living that? Equality cannot be achieved if one race deems itself more superior than any other race. Guys, we have come a long way, but we still have a lot more to accomplish, and we cannot do that if we continue to fight against each other. I am Robin Hester, and this is my truth. Back to you, Paul. Thank you very much, Robin. 
And now look at some of the legal news around the country. Robert Durst appeared in court in New Orleans on Tuesday. The hearing focused on whether or not Durst should be tried in Louisiana for the gun and drug charges or, should, or if he should be tried in California to face murder charges. Durst's defense team continued to say that he is an innocent of murder. His team anticipated about having an FBI agent, a state trooper relative to the arrest, and a New York district attorney who have been involved in investigation as a witness, but none of them showed up. After 100 witnesses and two months of trial, the prosecution of Aaron Hernandez has ended. Hernandez has pleaded not guilty to the murder of Odin Lloyd, who died because of injuries to his heart, lungs, liver, and a kidney. The jurors paid close attention to the photos of Lloyd's body. Superior Court Judge Susan Garsh sent the jurors home and said they should expect to receive a case by next week. The persecution and defense, the prosecution and defense in the first phase of the Boston Marathon bomber trial has ended. Jurors will begin deliberating after some necessary steps. After the jury reaches a verdict, a same jury will hear evidence in the second phase of the trial to determine if Sonaro should face the death penalty or spend the rest of his life in prison. March Madness may be ending, the Phil but the Phillies are just getting warmed up. Margaret Ford has the latest in sports. Thanks, guys. March Madness comes to a close this week. The Final Four play on Saturday, April 4th, when the first seed Duke Blue Devils will take on the Michigan State Spartans, who rank 7th overall in the East. The Spartans are the only team still in the tournament that was not the top seed in their division. After that game, the number one in the Midwest, Kentucky Wildcats, face the top seed, Wisconsin Badgers. The winners of these two games will play on Monday in the finals to be held in Indianapolis. Moving from the court to the diamond, Philadelphia Phillies fans have something to cheer about with the win over the Atlantic Braves yesterday. In one of the last games of the preseason, lefty Cole Hamels gave up only one earned run while picking up the win in his last start before opening day. While Braves righty Julio Tehran gave up eight hits and seven runs within four innings and picked up the loss. The Phillies will take on the Pittsburgh Pirates for the last two exhibition games before their opening day on Monday against the Red Sox. That's all I have for sports. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Margaret. When we come back, we'll find out if there's good weather or here to stay. It's easy to tell if you've had way too many. But what if you've had just one too many? Buzz driving is drunk driving. places you'd never consider texting. So why would you do it while driving? Leave risky driving to the professionals. Stop the texts and together we can stop the wrecks. Mark Ronson's Uptown Funk featuring Bruno Mars hits number one on the Billboard Hot 100 of the 2010s for the 13th week in a row. If the song continues to be number one for another four weeks, they could beat the record of the longest song at number one in the Hot 100. Dogs may be man's best friend, but it seems like cats are the internet's best friend. It's been found that nearly 15% of all content on the internet are cats. CNN estimates that there could be up to 6.5 billion cat pictures and videos on the internet. That's a lot. And now here's Lauren with hopefully a very good weather forecast. Well, everyone, it was a beautiful day today on campus. Temperatures tonight are going to stay a little bit higher. It will be 54 degrees and mostly cloudy. Now let's take a look at our five-day forecast. Tomorrow we can expect some rain, so you should get your umbrellas out. The high will be 68 degrees and the low will be in the mid-50s. Saturday you can expect some clouds and windy weather. The high will be mid-50s and the low will be 36 degrees. Sunday it's going to be a very nice day, mostly sunny. The high will be 61 degrees and the low will be 44 degrees. Monday, once again, it's going to be partly cloudy. The high will be 68 degrees and the low will be 49 degrees. And on Tuesday, it will once again be cloudy. 
the high will be 69 degrees and the low will be 51 degrees. Now let's take a look at our weather window. We can see from today's weather window that it truly was a beautiful day. Clear skies, light breeze, all the students were out and about on campus and it really just was a gorgeous day outside. It really was. And I saw on your forecast that we have a lot of clouds, yes. but as, as long as it's in the upper 60s, I yes, can deal with it. As long as it's no snow, right. it's good. See, I'm yeah. holding out for 70. I want 70. Yeah. Oh my I'm, gosh. I, I need Winter, 70, I think. Yeah. I can, I can deal. It's definitely on its way, but chicken, taking a little bit of time. It needs to hurry up. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. And that's all we have for today. Thank you for joining us. I'm Ryan Woodhatch. And I'm, and I'm Paul Hudrick. Have a good one. Have a good night.